Hello everyone and welcome back to another Glue tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how we can fetch data from Google Spreadsheet using the Google Spreadsheet tag. Let's get into it. To get started with the Google Spreadsheet tag extension, it comprises of two parts. We have sources and settings. So let's go ahead and jump into settings and get started. There's just two things that we need to get, which is the Google Credentials JSON file and the API key. Then we just need to set the OAuth redirect URI. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Google Cloud Platform and take a look at how to do this. So as you can see, this is my dashboard if I was to create a brand new project. Now the first thing that we need to do is ensure that we enable APIs and services as we want to interact with the Google Spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and do that now. And if we scroll down and find Google Sheets API, as mine's already created, I just simply go into manage and then we need to head into credentials. As you can see, my web client is already set up, but let's go and explore this now to show you. What we need to do is set up the URI, which is found here. So if we just simply copy and paste this and paste it into this box here. And then if we download the JSON file, that's two parts of the setup complete. And then what we need to do is go back into credentials. We need to then set up an API key. So click on credentials, API key, copy the API key over, and then set the API key up in the field here. Once you're happy with that, click on submit. And then all we need to do then is get the access token. So you click on the get access token button. Google will ask you to authorize and log into the application. And if you simply click on the advanced link, that will then take you straight back here and then you'll get a confirmation to say that everything's set up. So the second part of the setup is going into the sources option. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So as you can see, I've already gone ahead and created one. So let's take a look at this and show you the fields that are available. So the first job is to name the source in exactly the same way that you'd create and name a post. And then we need to go into the data sources tag options. Now the source type is going to be a Google spreadsheet because that's what we're going to be interacting with and taking the data from. The spreadsheet ID can be found in the URL of the spreadsheet that you're working from. So let's go ahead and take a look at the one that we're going to be working from to show you where to find this. So we have this file here, which is car stock. We're going to be interacting with this data here, but the URL comprises of an ID that we need to take from here. So if we copy and paste that into this field here, the next thing is the enable sheet option. If you change the name of the sheet, we must update this here because by default, the name is sheet one. So if it has been left as sheet one, you can just simply leave this off. And the final part is auto update settings. What this allows us to do is set up an auto scheduler, either by minutes or hour. And you can set that up on a frequency that works for you and the resources available on your server. So it's a cron job that can automatically fetch information. So as you're updating the spreadsheet, you can fetch it at a convenient time that works for you. Now, of course, be mindful of the resources available on your server. Now, there is also a manual option to sync the information. So if you were to make a change on the spreadsheet, simply click on sync now and it will automatically update that information immediately. And once you're happy with everything, just simply click update and we can begin interacting with our spreadsheet. So on the screen in front of you, you can see that we've got a table and a pie chart and a title for car stock availability. Now in this demonstration, what I've done is created an external spreadsheet and we're actually fetching this data in from there. So there's been no data entered on the website whatsoever. All we've done is linked up the website to the external spreadsheet. The way this works is it uses a cron job to synchronize this information over and it's mega simple to set up. And it's also even easier to set up the cells to match up with the cells within the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and take a look at this for a moment. So every part that you see within the body of this page is all dynamic data that's fetched in from the external source. So we've got our table, so we've got color, the manufacturers of cars, and then we've got a row at the bottom, which is the total. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet that we created, it's pretty much exactly the same. 
But from a client's perspective or a customer's perspective, this is a lot easier to manage and handle rather than having to go into the website every time. So all this information, as you can see, is reflected directly over to the website. So let's just check a couple of these cells. So we've got the color of blue, red, green, silver, white, and black, and a total of 109 in the first cell. Blue, red, green, silver, white, and black, and 109. So as you can see, it's exactly the same data, and the pie chart just shows the totals of each of these as well. So let's go ahead and show you how this works. Let's dive into Elementor, and then we'll see how this all works. Now that we're in Elementor, let's go ahead and take a look at how we're fetching this data and how we're using it. So the first thing is the title. What I've actually done is pulled the title from the spreadsheet. So as you can see, we've got car stop availability in cell 2B. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've set my title to be a dynamic Google spreadsheet tag. And then I've selected my Google spreadsheet and the horizontal cell is two. And of course the vertical cell is B. So that's actually fetching that information directly into our view. So let's have a look at the table. Now this table is a Crocker block widget, which is an Elementor tool set. So if we take a look, it's split into three parts. We've got the table header, the body and the footer. The header is fetching exactly the same field from the spreadsheet that we're replicating over from the car stock spreadsheet. So we've got color, and the manufacturers of the vehicles and how that gets that is exactly the same as when I shown you the example of the title. So we set the text as a dynamic Google spreadsheet tag and then we select our tag and then we simply just enter the horizontal cell and the vertical cell. So the first one is color and so we set 4B. So if we go ahead and take a look at that. So if we look at 4B, color. And this is exactly the same for all of the fields in here. So there's no need to do any custom coding at all to get these total values. All of the code is handled in the spreadsheet. So if we go ahead and look at the totals, I've just done a very basic sum of each of these columns. So all of the hard work is being done in the spreadsheet. We're not having to do any of that in the website. The same thing is applied to the pie chart. Um, just slightly different. So if we go into the content, obviously we've got the manufacturers and this time we're just fetching the overall totals for each. Now this comprises of two parts, so the label, which is obviously uh, the label of each segment and of course the value. So what I've done again is selected the Google spreadsheet tag, selected our Google spreadsheet and we've put in the values of the horizontal cell and the vertical cell and then that's spread across all of these here and that's reflected from the information that we pull in from the spreadsheet. So now that everything's set up in the widgets, what we're going to do is take a look at the spreadsheet itself and show how we can change the values, synchronize that over and see what that looks like on the front end of the website. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we head over to our spreadsheet. As you can see, we've got our totals here. What I'm going to do is change some of the values in these cells to reflect some change. Now that's done. If we go back to the plugin settings in our Google spreadsheet post, sync now. Now if we head over to the main part of the website, let's do a refresh. You can see that these values have now changed and that's reflected on the pie chart as well. So there's one final thing that I wanna show you. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. Now you may notice that we've got this visible cell here, which is set to yes. What we're going to do is use this value here to determine whether a widget is to be shown or not. So let's go ahead and show you what we mean. So let's take this pie chart widget for example. If we select this widget, if we go into advanced and we use the Jet Engine Dynamic Visibility extension, what we want to do is show or hide this widget based on the condition of the value in that cell from the external source. So let's go ahead and do that now. So if we do condition is equal to, the field is going to be our Google spreadsheet tag. And then again, what we need to do is select the Google spreadsheet, and then we need to put in the correct values of the horizontal and vertical cell. So if we jump back in, so it's gonna be five I, and then the value is going to be yes because we want to show the element if the condition is met to yes. So let's go ahead and update. If we take a look at the front end, this should still be visible. However, if we change this value to no, 
And then if we then sync this back over, let's go ahead and refresh our page. As you can see, the pie chart no longer exists. This is incredibly important for a client or a customer if they want to control their information from an external source. It's much easier to access for them. So instead of having to go through the website and going in and changing these conditions or changing the values in the table, it's much easier for the client or the customer to handle this on their own systems. Perhaps it is a Google spreadsheet where they can just enter the values themselves here. And then of course, typically you'd have a cron job running so that the customer doesn't have to come in and manually sync this but of course this is far easier than going in and editing the visual every single time but of course if the customer does add any additional rows or columns to the tables or any other information they want to capture of course this needs to be entered or added to the elemental page itself now i hope this video was really helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.